3, 4. I want to preach uh, the word of the Lord tonight if God would help me. Yeah, the world, their, their definition of that is a whole lot different than the church. They say that uh, seeing is believing. You hear that? See it. I see signs about it and see sayings people put out. Seeing is believing, but that's not the way it is with God. I believe and therefore I have seen because I believe. Amen. I don't have to see the sea part to believe it parted. I don't have to see a fish swallow a man to believe a fish swallowed a man. I don't have to see a man uh, kill a giant with a stone to believe a man killed a giant with a stone. I believe it because God's Word said it. God said it. He can't lie. He's not a man that he could lie. And uh, every word in the Word of God is true. Every word that God speaks is true. And it'll come to pass if God makes you a promise. It's going to come to pass just like God said it would. There's no chance of anything else happening. Praise God. But because we believe the Lord, we have seen great things. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for what I have seen because we believe. But I'm also thankful for the things that I do believe that I have not seen. Amen. I'm not trying to be a, speaking a riddle to you, but that's, that's the way it is. I didn't see the empty tomb. I've never been there. I saw pictures that supposedly is the, the, the empty tomb. I didn't see it. I have not seen it, but I believe it's there. I've not been to the upper room, but yet I've experienced Pentecost. I haven't been inside the empty tomb, but yet I've experienced the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's so many things that my eye hasn't seen that my heart has experienced. Praise the Lord. I'm glad for that tonight. Psalms chapter 34. Appreciate you being here. And uh, I'm just going to preach to you like everybody that should be here is here. And uh, I'm a firm believer that we're going to go to the judgment for all the things that we should have heard. When God sent us a message and we went there to receive it, we're going to have to answer for it as though we were there. It's not God's fault we went there to hear it. Amen. And so I'm just going to try to ignore the fact that people that need this, some of you need it and you're here. Some of them need it and they're not here. I can't help that. I'm not responsible for that. This is what the Lord gave me for the service tonight. So I'm going to do my best to preach to you. Psalms chapter 34. I'm going to read one verse here. It's a wonderful psalm. And um, I encourage you. I know you're probably reading your Bible. Maybe you have your set uh, schedule that you're going by. But if you take time tomorrow and read the whole 34th Psalm, you'll be nothing but blessed by it. I don't want to mess you up in your schedule. Boy, this is a good Psalm. There's a lot of, you can just preach probably multiple messages out of every verse here. But I want to talk to us tonight, especially to uh, our children and younger people. I want to talk to you from one verse, if the Lord will help me, and uh, maybe demonstrate some things to you tonight. Verse number eight said, Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Can you, can you hear the psalmist saying that? This was a, uh, a song that he wrote. This was the hymn book. This was the King James Version hymn book of the early church. They didn't have the, the, the Cleveland Church of God uh, red back church hymnal that most of us grew up on. They didn't have that. But this was their song. And I, I'm telling you, when David wrote this, his mind, it, it just in, in my mind, it, in my heart, this is the way I see it, okay? And when it's your turn to preach it, you preach it how you want to preach it. But this is what I, this is what I interpret here. David is thinking back. He said, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his trouble. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. And then he said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. As David is writing the psalm, his mind reflecting back when he says, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. I wonder what all David was thinking about when he wrote the psalm. I wonder what was in his mind when he penned the words. Was he thinking back to the lion and the bear? And, uh, and how God delivered him? 
Was he thinking back to the time that the giant roared against him and he said, I'm, I'm going to praise the Lord. His praise will continually be in my mouth. When he talks about, oh, magnify the Lord, he's giving a beckoning call to everybody around. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David is trying from the beginning of the song to get those that hear the song in on it with him. Are y'all with me so far? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Great participation we're having so far tonight. This treatment up like a camp meeting message, no doubt. Praise God. Let's try to come together now and help the preacher tonight, okay? David's trying his best. David's in the same shape I am. He's preaching this out. And he said, I'm trying to get everybody on board. Oh, come and let us magnify. Let us exalt the name of the Lord together. I'm wanting to try to get everybody I can involved in the fact that that God is good. Yes. That's what David's saying here. Help him, he starts telling them, I sought the Lord. Maybe, maybe he said, maybe David said that in service. Maybe he said, oh, come and magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify him with me. And let us exalt his name together. And nobody said a word. They just sleepily looked at him. And David said, he starts going on. And he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. Nobody moved. And he delivered me out of all my fear. Nobody moved. They, they looked to him and were lying their face with not a shame. No response. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Nobody shouts yet. The angel of the Lord he came around. Them that fear him. Now he's starting to roll them in again. He's going in again. It's not about me. It's about everybody else now. David starts telling him, I cried. I done this. The Lord heard me. The Lord did this for me. Then he says, they looked unto him. That's you. They did it. Then in verse 7 again, David's trying again to rope that. David's a preacher as it were, just like us. I feel like I'd look terrible in a short skirt with pom-poms up here. It, wouldn't even, it would not be seemly at all. It wouldn't be comfortable yeah. for me to be a cheerleader. No. But I feel like sometimes I have threatened for over 25, almost 30 years of ministry. Matter of fact, this May will make 30 years. I have threatened for 30 years to come to church with a giant pair of pom-poms some night and just say, come and let us praise the Lord. Give me an H. Give me an H. God, hallelujah. Try to feel like what I'm trying to do every time we go to church. I'm trying my best to convince you, God's people, of how good He is, how wonderful He is, how worthy that He is. And David's trying his best to get them convinced and roped into it. And he said, then he's trying to even make it sound better. And he's like, okay, come on, class. Everybody set up here. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear Him. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. That should excite you. If you're saved, if you're going to heaven if you're blood bought. That ought to excite your spirit. Amen. When I read a verse that says, The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Yes. Amen. You ought to praise God at that moment. Yes. Without having to be called on, asked, prodded, pushed, promoted, should create that atmosphere. And then to verse 8, David is still reaching so hard to try to pull everybody together. And he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Boy, I tell you what, as I pray today, I pray for those that are in the church that need to move up in God. As I pray today for those that are in the church that need healing. As I pray for those that are in the church that need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. As I pray for those that are in the church today that need to do better about faithfulness. As I pray for those that have been coming to get on board and come every service like God's yes. Word tells us to. As I pray for them that are on the outside looking in to get in the ark of safety. After a while in my prayer this afternoon, I said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's some things that can only be experienced. You experience it for yourself. Yes. yes. Is that right? Amen. David said, Oh, taste and see. I remember Brother Braxton preaching. I was uh, just a young teenager. Brother Braxton was preaching at Brother Tommy's meeting one year about the goodness of the Lord. And he somehow or another, I don't even know what his text was, but somehow or another, he wound up on food. 
And uh, so Sister Gail, you know Brother Braxton, it wouldn't have been hard for him to get that in his mind, I don't think. And here's Brother Braxton big around as a, as a drum, you know, 55-gallon drum. He's preaching on food. And he got telling about the things that his mom made and what they was raised on, the kind of biscuits they had. I'm telling you what, they didn't have anything in the church house for an illustration, but I could smell the biscuits. After a while, Brother Braxton said, it seemed like it had just come out around then. He said, I'm starting to see this stuff called I Can't Believe It Ain't Butter. And Brother Braxton said, I ate some of that on a biscuit. He said, butter don't come in a spray bottle. Praise God. Butter, you slice it off and you spread it on. He said, someone hand him a spray bottle. He said, here, pray put this on your biscuit, this butter. And he read it and said, I can't believe it isn't butter. And Brother Braxton said, I can. Yes. You know how come I can believe it ain't butter? Because I've had butter. Yes. You know why I can? I don't want to eat that junk. We've had a few arguments in our marriage. I'm not going to stand here and lie to you and tell you we've been married 25 years never had a crossword. We've had crossword and some of them have been loud words. And some of them have lasted for a day at a time, you know. We lay in bed. Each one of us, are you still awake? Yes. <laughs> and a little bit later she'd say, are you still awake? Yes. And finally, when neither one of us could stand it anymore, we said, okay, I'm sorry. So we can go to sleep. We didn't want the sun to go down on our wrath. We've had some loud words. You have too. And anybody tells you they had this lion. I'll tell you what, we got in an argument that hadn't been very, very long, and I said, what is this stuff? She said, these are cupcakes. Little Debbie, I said, oh, no, they're not. I said, I don't know what kind of box those come out of, but I promise you they never met Little Debbie. How do you know? I said, because I've ate Little Debbie's cupcakes. She said, well, I decided to save money, and so I went over here and bought the value brand. I said, don't do that no more. When I go to the ice box and I get them out, I want them to be just what it says it is. I don't want to have to imagine a whole Ding dong. I want to taste the ding dong. <laughs> Amen. Y'all ain't helping me very good tonight. Praise right. God. When I go to the I go to the cupboard and I get me a ding dong out, I don't want some cheap, dried out mess. That ain't hardly got no cream in the middle of it. <laughs> Brother Junior, are you helping me? When I go to eat something, I went to my mom and dad's so we was having breakfast one morning and I said, What is this? Bacon. I said, uh uh, that ain't bacon. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mom said, yeah, it is. That's right. I said, I'm telling you, it ain't bacon. What is it? Oh, it's nothing. It's just bacon. It's just bacon. I said, no, no, it's not either. I said, I'm going to tell you one thing. I don't know what the brand name is. I don't know if it's right, blue and gold, corn king, or great value. But I'm telling you, this stuff on my plate has never saw a pig in its life. After a while, I got over there, Sister Gail, and read the package. It was turkey bacon. Yeah. There's no such thing. Turkeys do not have bacon. That's <laughs> disgusting. I told Mom, I said, listen, if you want Dad trying to watch your sodium water, I said, I'll tell you what. I'd rather die of a heart attack happy <laughs> than I have live as an old man starving to death on this stuff here, calling it bacon. That's a lie. Oh, taste and see. I'll tell you what, I've heard some things in my lifetime of serving the Lord. I've been in some church services that I... And I said, mm, that, mm, that, don't, that don't taste right. Mm -mm. Y'all, you ever done it? You ever feed peanut butter to a horse? We used to get old Prince and get a stick, put peanut butter on him, feed it to him, and hit him water with old lips around, make faces at us. That's how I feel trying to choke down some of the doctrines that have been burnt up out of hell and fed to the church. You hear me tonight? I'm telling you what, if you've ever ate the real thing, you'll never have to wonder Amen. if it's real in your life. Nobody ought to pat you on the shoulder and tell you this one's real. That one's not. That's the Holy Ghost. That's just jabber. I'm telling you how to know the difference. It's the taste of ever had real biscuits, you're never going to be cheated and, and uh, have to eat them little things, you know. Help them, Lord. We hadn't been married very long. <laughs> we went through a trial one morning at breakfast time. She set out some stuff supposed to be in biscuits. I said, honey, them look a whole lot like communion wafers to me. A biscuit? You know, I'm not giving a cooking class tonight. I want to preach to you. But a biscuit should be so big. Not like this. Uh -huh. A biscuit should be thick and fluffy. 
It should not crunch when you eat it. It ought to have something in the middle that is fluffy and light. And you put butter on it that does not come out of a spray bottle. Are you all hungry? <laughs> if you've ever had real bacon, you're not going to be fooled by turkey bacon. If you've ever had blue and gold sausage or Brother Lemuel Gorley sausage, you won't ever be fooled by a turkey sausage patty. If you've ever been to fish this down here and ate catfish there, if you've ever been to Brother Clint and Sister Holly Renner's and ate the crappie when she fries it up, you're never going to be fooled by a fish stick out of a box in a microwave. You all want to help me tonight? I'm help telling you what, there's some things the devil is trying to slide in on help us. Uh, and there's people sitting around the edge who don't know the difference. Uh, and they're being fooled by the faith. Jesus. Just because it sparkles doesn't mean it's a shield of gold. A shield of brass would sparkle too. There's a difference. I'll tell you how to know the difference. You've tasted the real and the fake won't work. Oh, taste and see. Praise God. There's a whole lot of things that we can taste of tonight. A whole lot of things that we can experience tonight. Amen. I brought a few things here. I'm going to let you uh, have an opportunity to participate in the sermon. Praise God. Y'all okay? Amen. All right. Addison, you, you and Caroline, Caden, you want to help me? Man. Now I can tell you what this stuff is, these little bags. This is not poison, okay? I didn't do anything weird to it. Matter of fact, Brianna helped me package it, and our hands were clean and washed, okay? So you see this? What do you guys think this is? Lemon drops. Who's lemon it? drops. Lemon drops. Think it looks like a lemon drop? But you don't know for sure. Unless you taste it. Right? Do you, are you, do you don't have any uh, food allergies of any kind. I want you to fall down here and eat a nephew then because I don't have one. Okay? Oh, we have a Lord. Would you taste that? Would you tell us what you think that is? Are you sure it's a lemon drop? Because you're tasting it? I'm not sure that because I'm tasting it. Pretty sure? Addison, do you like lemons? Huh? It's not gross? What do you all think that is? I mean, it's obvious it's not a chip, right? Now, all these people out here think that's a lemon drop, but the only way to really know for sure if it's a lemon drop is to taste it, turn around. Look. It's a lemon job. <laughs> Caroline's eyes was water and she put it in. She went. <laughs> it's pretty obvious at this point that that's a lemon drop. But the only way you hear, y'all, spin it up right here, okay? The only way, because we're going to we're gonna do some food testing tonight, okay? The only way to really know for sure is you taste it. You yeah. got to taste it to know. What do y'all think this is? What do you think? Are we all in agreement tonight that I have in this bag of peppermint? Yes. But really the only way to tell is to taste. So I want you all to taste it and then give us a report. What do you think that may be? Are you voting peppermint? I'm voting peppermint. Voting peppermint? Huh? Peppermint? Okay. Spit them in here. We're not done. Now these here little candies... They're special. <laughs> I want you to, do you like, here, I want you to give you an orange one of those, an orange one of those, and we'll give you an orange one of those. Now turn around where they can see you. Put it, pop it in there and taste that. What's it taste? Can you chew it? Is it sour? I can't tell or not. Is it very Hard. Is it sour? It is? These are extreme shocker sour sweet tarts. <laughs> I want you to know, I can tell you how sour they are. When you start biting it, if you put them in your mouth start biting them, you'll feel that tightness in here in your jaw. And it'll start doing things when you spit them out. And I mean in just a little bit, you're going to know that's sour. But see, even though you're sitting there and you can see the reaction on their faces and yeah. they're telling you what they taste, yes. you don't know. Mm -mm. You know why? Because you're not tasting it yourself. 
Now in this back here, probably something that every, surely I think every kid likes. If they, I haven't met a kid yet that didn't like these. What do you think that is? Now what you know it's not an off brand. Is it a Dorito? Huh? Brother Junior, do you eat Doritos? You eat anything right here. There's two or three on that right there stacked up. You want a Dorito, Sister Carolyn? Huh? What, what about it? Pretty good? Yes. I'm going to tell you something. You can taste it. I can carry a bag around. I'll tell you what the deal is with God. You don't have to be satisfied with one chip. You don't have to come to church one time. And just get one taste. Help him, Jesus. You don't go to the altar and cry one time and say, okay, I ate a good Dorito from heaven. This was good. I'll tell you something about God. He gets you a whole bag he full. A whole bag. You know, God's not, God, God, God's not feeding his children out of little Ziploc bags from the Dollar General in Dirks, Arkansas. God deals in things like this. And he don't deal in off brands. He's not dealing in, in uh, well, help me, Lord. Uh, the Bible said many would come in the last day. It yes. was saying that they was this, they was that. Dr. Thunder is not Dr. Pepper. Dr. No. This, Dr. That. There's all these different things. But there's only one thing. Mr. Pepe is not Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is Dr. Pepper. And there is no substitute for it. I'm going to tell you something. When you get ready to serve God and you can come to the help altar, you don't just Jesus. come and get a chip. You don't just come and get a lemon drop. Hey, David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord He is good. Yes. I'll tell you what it's not just something I taste on Sunday morning. No, it tastes the same on Thursday night. And not just Thursday night. It yes. tastes the same on Monday and Tuesday. It tastes Help the same God. driving my car as it does driving my tractor. As it does in this pulpit. As it does on vacation. Oh I'm be seated. There's a lot of things that I've tasted of. The Bible said the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Sin, sin has a bad taste. Yes. Sin's one of the only things I know that you can do and affect other people. I can eat a Dorito. Unless you get close enough to smell my breath, it will not affect you. It will affect my waistline. It will affect, if you know you have problems with pimples or something, it will affect you, but it won't affect nobody else. Sister Jennifer can eat chocolate and pepperoni pizza and drink Mountain Dew every day and have her face covered in pimples, but if you don't eat those same things, it's not going to affect you the same way. I want you to know something tonight. Oh, taste and see. Yes. There's some of you that need to taste them. I can tell you how the Holy Ghost feels. You can see what it done to Brother Junior. You can hear him testify. You can watch his facial Help expressions. Him, but the only way you're ever going to know is when you get baptized. And you don't just get baptized like eating one chip. I'm telling you, it's the back that never ends. It's the endless supply that is available to whosoever will. Coming to Jesus Christ, being a Christian is not even like getting a whole bag of lemon drops. It's not even like going to Shetler's, the Amish store in Missouri, and buying a 50 pound bag of lemon drops. I tell you what, when you come to, if you like lemon drops, I'll tell you what salvation's like. It's like He gave you the key to the lemon drop factory. Sir, I, I love, I tell you what I've done this just today. We left the sale barn and we pulled across to Big Red. Now, th now this just, you know, this ain't spiritual, okay? But Big Red in their, in their Coke place where all the cold sodas are, they've got a rack in there full of Reese's cups. <laughs> I'll tell you what, your tongue there is slap you to death trying to get a hold of one of them, brother. <laughs> He's licking his lips right now. It made your socks roll up and down. The only thing better than a Reese's cup is a cold Reese's cup. I stopped by today. Jennifer bought one at the dollar store, and I, I appreciated that. It's in the ice box waiting on me to get home. But I pulled on down the road, pulled in big red, and she said, "Are you serious?" I said, "Yes, ma'am. Would you please go in there to that cold cabinet and get me one of those cold Reese's cups?" Help him, Jesus. The only thing better than a Hershey's candy bar. A cold Hershey's candy bar. 
Amen. And when you come to God and you taste this, this is the only way I know to preach this to you. Because I cannot tell you the benefit of faithfulness like being faithful can. I can't tell you the benefit of a daily prayer life. I can tell you what it's done for me. I can show you what it's done for other people. But the only way you're ever going to know what it means to pray through to the Holy Ghost every day is when you start praying through to the Holy Ghost every day for yourself. I can't tell you how much good it will do you to give to God if you're stingy with your money to God. I can't tell you about the back and preach it to you. I can show you the Scripture. But the only way you're ever going to know is when you do it yourself. Yes. And you see God Come and you the devour. I'm telling you, taste that. Jesus. Those cold Hershey's, man, they're good. Amen. And if I bought you a hundred pounds of cold milk chocolate, boy, you talk about good. It wouldn't last me all that long. I could probably eat my weight in chocolate. But I'll tell you where I've been, Sister Jean. I got in a little teacup on a on a on some kind of a rail ride in Hershey. Pennsylvania. Yep. I went to where they make those candies. Yes. Me and Sister Jennifer and our whole family, Brother John and Sister Steph Rose, we went in there and I'm telling you what, I rode through that Hershey factory, that plant, watching those candy bars come down those conveyor belts, watching those gigantic vats full of milk chocolate and then pouring it into those molds to make Hershey. I'm telling you, if you took me there in the middle of the night and gave me a key to the Hershey factory, that still wouldn't be like what it is. So when you come into the kingdom of God and he said, I'll give you ever good and every perfect gift. I can't even describe it to you tonight. I'm telling you what, if you gave me the key to the Hershey plant and turned me loose in there at night and picked me up a thousand pounds and a million pimples later, you still wouldn't know what it was like. But brother, I'm telling you, God has things that's available for the church and for his children that many will never have because they refuse to taste it. Somebody said one time years ago, church, I heard somebody testifying. Said you can't, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And that's true on one hand. But my grandmother said one night I was sitting by Mayma at church, and somebody said you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. We can get you to church, we can't make you get in. And Mayma leaned over and she said, I'll tell you what you can do. She said, you can salt that sucker's feet until it's so salty that he'll run to the water hole. And that's what I do in church. I feel like I'm salting your feet to try to get you to drink the water of life. That's why I worship. That's why I shout when my shoulders hurt and I can't hardly get my hands up. I get them up anyway. You know why? I'm trying to salt your feet. I'm trying to convince you to drink this water and eat this bread of life. And the Jesus said, I am the bread. I'm the bread of life that came down from heaven. Brother, listen, oh, taste and see. But the Lord is good. If you're here and you've never been drunk in the Spirit, all I can do is tell you about it. But you can taste it. If you're sitting in this building and you've never danced in the Holy Ghost, you can watch me. You can watch everybody else. But the only way you're ever going to know what it feels like is to pick your feet up and stomp them down and let the Holy Ghost have His way with your foot. Amen. You hear me? Amen. Yeah. Oh, taste and see. Why is it? Why is it that we feel like you know when when, when our children were babies? I'm about through. Our children were babies. We set them up, put them in their little what did you call them? What did they call them? Things? Bumble a bumble, bumble chair, a bumble, bumble, bumble chair, or something like that. A little fat looking squishy chair that you put them little children in, set them at the table, and we'd get their food and we'd say, "It's an airplane." Open up. We'd yell. We'd tell them, here comes the truck. Are you ready? Open up. Open the garage up. And they'd eat it, you know. And there's some reason why. Y'all, I'm not trying to be a clown. There's a lot of times in church I feel like I'm standing here saying, look here, here comes a blessing. Open up. Open up. Get ready. Here it comes. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Open up, ready? <gasps> I stuff the bread of life in the mouth of people that are sitting there starving to death, spiritually emaciated, 
ribs sticking out of their spiritual man. Their eyes sunken and hollow. Their mouth cracked from dryness. And I'm sitting here with the water of life and the bread of life. Try to tell them and they're going, mm -mm. Yeah. Help him, mm. Help him Jesus. Mm. That's what our kids did. Mm. I'd get a hold of them. I'd get them like this, just like you do a calf trying to give it a pill. I'll go to squeeze them. Oh, oh, oh. I'll get my hands in between them jaws, Sister Debbie, and I'd put that food in there and clank it shut. I'd hold their nose, rub their throat, till they'd have to swallow. And sometimes, even then, they'd look back at you with a defiant little eye and they'd go, Bleh! spit it right back up. Why is it that we have to feel the same way at church? And I feel like I'm having to get people by the mouth and a little wet mouth, a little wet mouth. And they stick it in and they're trying to rub their throat and hold their nose. I didn't come tonight to crack you up. But I'm telling you what, I got to praying about it today. And I said, Lord, the only way they're ever going to know is if they'll just taste it. I've had those children in high chairs and whirl their mouth and get a hold of them like that and pull it open and Jennifer would stick it in. Sometimes take two of us to get it in. And once you did, sometimes they, they squirt it out the side. I Me and you was talking about worming cows, giving them oral wormer. And you work, 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 get that stuff back down in there and all of a sudden that cow's tongue looks like it's seven foot long. Comes lawing out and there goes the wormer. I feel that way sometimes trying to feed people the goodness of the Lord. But every once in a while we get those kids and we force it in. You just feel like a monster. And all of a sudden they touch their tongue and they go. And their eyes brighten up. And before you get another dip, they'd be going. Yeah. A little mouth hanging open. You put another in it and they. <laughs> That's how we feel about church sometimes. I tell you, it bothers me. When I feel like I'm having to stand at the altar squeezing people's mouths open and stuffing the bread of life in it. But all I can tell you is, if you'll open that mouth yes. and you'll taste this, you'll find out it's the sweetest thing you've ever had in your oh, mouth. Oh, Jesus. Thank oh, you, yeah. Thank you said, Brother Jesus. Justin, some of that's Thank kind of hard for me to digest. That's all right. The prophet said it'll be bitter in your mouth, but it'll be sweet in your belly. Yes. It'll do for you what you need. I still to this day don't like some green vegetables. Amen. And I eat them because I know they're good for me. Yes. You can't live on what this world's feeding you. Amen. You cannot exist on what society is poking into your mind and your heart. And I can stand here all day long and proclaim the bread of life, the water of life. But the only way you're ever really going to know is if you taste it for yourself. Yeah. So tonight, I mingle my voice with that of the prophet of Israel, the old psalmist. And I say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Brother Junior, almost 30 years of being saved. Didn't have the Holy Ghost. And man, you saw folks shout and jump and run and hoot and holler, roll, stagger. You've probably seen them have to take them out. Lost in the Holy Ghost. But all of a sudden, two or three years ago, whatever it's been now, Last month, standing right there, Brother Junior's. And he yes. left here licking the sweet nectar of heaven off his chin and licking his fingers and saying, this is good. This is good. And he went and told people about it that didn't even believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and couldn't tell them about it. Some of them were talking in tongues. And all of your effort, the only way they're ever going to know is when they go, and they taste it for themselves. Yes. Praise God. Let's stand tonight. I watch people come in church. I mean, I know y'all all know this, but just so we're clear. The altar is not just for sinners. Do you know someone said here a while back, I didn't know we could go more than once to the altar. And I'm thinking to myself, you've been coming for months and we all go. How do you not know? But just in case you don't know, I want you to know the altar is somewhere you can visit every church service. Jesus is the well you can drink from every day. It's not just those little girls 
Little boys, Addison saw me get ready. We come in church tonight. She said, Dad, I know you're going to preach for that, but could you just spare one Dorito? I said, Sissy, if you help me preach tonight, you'll get a Dorito. How come I feel like that some people come to church and they get one little Dorito and they, that's good, thank you. We'll see you in six months. We'll see you next time we have a problem. Thanks for the Dorito. And the whole time, I'm standing here with bushel baskets like this and saying, here, here, here. No, thank you for the Dorito. Here you go. No, no, thank you for the Dorito. Wouldn't you like 